the big political story here in India. Four days, zero work. That's been the story of parliament this week. Today, the Lok Sabha was adjourned six seconds after proceedings began. Just six seconds. The government is almost sounding like a broken record, making the same demand again and again, that Rahul Gandhi should apologize. The government says his comments on Indian democracy in London were an insult to the country, that Rahul Gandhi was asking for foreign intervention in India. Law Minister Kiran Rijiju made the same claim today as well. But this time, Rahul Gandhi was in town to reply. He had returned from London and was ready to speak in the Lok Sabha. Just one problem though, he never got the opportunity. The government kept insisting on an apology while the opposition kept raising the Adani Hindenburg issue. In the end, both houses were adjourned for the day. Rahul Gandhi then met the Lok Sabha speaker and requested for an opportunity to speak tomorrow. But Mr. Gandhi says the speaker was non-committal. In a press conference later in the day, Rahul accused the government of creating a distraction to dodge the Adani issue. He says if Indian democracy is indeed functioning, he should be allowed to speak in parliament where charges have been made against him by not one but four union ministers. Listen in. I'm a member of parliament and as the allegation has been made in parliament by four ministers, it is my right to have the opportunity. It's my democratic right. So if Indian democracy was functioning, I would be able to say my piece in parliament. So, let me speak. Please, let him finish. So, actually what we are, what you are seeing is a test of Indian democracy. After four leaders of the BJP have made an allegation about a member of parliament, is that member of parliament going to be given the same space that those four ministers have been given? Rahul Gandhi has made it into a habit to derail Indian democracy, criticize it, and demean it. Aaj Bharat ke lok tantra ko kisi ne apmanit kiya hai, demean kiya hai, to wo hai Rahul Gandhi. Press mein aisi koi baat nahi ki, ki unhe khed hai, jo unke dwara kaha gaya. बीजेपी का स्पष्ट आरोप है राहुल गांधी को माफी मांगना चाहिए और हम राहुल गांधी की माफी नामा के लिए देश भर में कैंपेन करते रहेंगे। Now, since all this ruckus is about Rahul Gandhi's speech in London, let's look at what exactly he has said. Mr. Gandhi addressed a couple of events in the city. He spoke at his alma mater, which is Cambridge. He also participated in media interactions and spoke at the Chatham House. The BJP claims Rahul Gandhi defamed India and sought foreign intervention in these speeches. Let's put that claim to test. We have compiled the key parts of Mr. Gandhi's speech in London. Listen to this. If Indian democracy collapses, in my view, um, democracy on the planet suffers a very serious, possibly fatal blow. So, it's important for you too. It's not just important for us. We'll deal with our problem. But you must be aware that this problem is going to play out at a global scale. It's not just going to play out in India. First of all, this is, it's our problem. Right? It's an internal problem, it's an Indian problem, and the, the solution is going to come from inside, it's not going to come from, from outside. So the surprising thing is that the, the so-called defenders of democracy, which are the United States, uh, European countries, seem to just be oblivious that a huge chunk of the democratic model has come undone. To be clear, there is nothing new in these allegations. Rahul has said the same things in India as well. As for the comments on democracy, what else do you expect? Does the government really expect an opposition leader to go abroad and praise the Prime Minister or speak about the weather? The Congress has consistently accused the BJP of undermining institutions and agencies. 
Rahul Gandhi only repeated those charges in London. Now, coming to the foreign intervention part. Mr. Gandhi clearly said, you just heard that, that these problems were India's internal issues and the solution will also come from inside India. How does that suggest foreign intervention? If anything, he's asking foreign powers to stay away from meddling in India. What Rahul Gandhi said was not defamatory or insulting to Indian democracy. But this everyday chaos and adjournments in parliament are most definitely an insult to our great democracy. We are, we are, we are spending 2.5 lakh rupees per minute every time parliament doesn't function. That's your money and my money going down the drain. As I always say, don't believe the politicians. If you want to make up your mind about whether Rahul Gandhi did indeed insult India's democracy on foreign soil, listen in entirety to what he has said, not snippets via press conferences that the BJP does. Make up your own mind. Don't believe the politicians, not from the BJP, not from the Congress either. Manish Tiwari is joining us on the broadcast. Yeah, he's a Congress MP of the Lok Sabha. Mr. Tiwari, thank you very much for your time here on Mirror Now. Good to have you on the show. Uh, let's start with Rahul Gandhi and his press conference before I, I go to other questions. Uh, in your view, uh, do you think he'll be allowed to speak tomorrow? He says the speaker was non-committal. You see, there's a larger issue which is involved here. And the larger issue is mm. the mm. privileges of members of parliament both on the floor of the House and outside Parliament. Article 105 was especially engrafted into the Constitution of India to give members of Parliament the unfettered right to speak uh, or articulate on issues, whatever they consider uh, appropriate. So therefore, that right is neither circumscribed nor is it fettered. And uh, if essentially somebody wants to qualify it as free fall of information, so yes, the, 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 the uh, makers of the Indian constitution actually wanted a free fall of information to take place on the floor of the house. Then there are other uncodified rights in Article 105.4, which are synchronous with the rights available to members of the House of Commons. So that's why for the past two days, I have been giving an, giving an adjourn, adjournment uh, notice that, uh, all right, if you have a difficulty with what Mr. Gandhi had said, we also have a difficulty with a, lo a lot which has been said over the years. So there, let there be a discussion on the floor of the House uh, with regard to what are the prerogatives, pr privileges available to members of Parliament, both inside the House and outside. And the government will not agree. Mm. Uh, Mr. Tiwari, uh, that was actually my second question to you because your tweet that you put two days ago was fairly interesting. You say, we may have reached a stage in the evolution of our great republic that we may soon require a debate on the freedom of speech and expression in parliament itself. Now, the opposition parties, along with the Congress party, have been accusing the government of switching off the mics of opposition leaders. Uh, why is that accusation being made? given that there has been hangama from both sides, from the opposition side and from the side of the government as well? Well, unfortunately, it is not episodical. It has been the experience of many people who sit on the opposition benches, yours truly included, that when uh, things which are uncomfortable for the government are articulated, mics do get switched off. That's a reality. It's unfortunate. But un that is what has happened repeatedly ad nauseum over the past uh, three and a half years. And so therefore, if that fact is uh, brought by a member of parliament to the attention of the country or even to the attention of the house, I don't see as to why such serious umbrage needs to be taken. And that's why, you know, uh, to go back to the earlier point I was making, the adjournment notice that I've given is uh, predicated on that tweet which you read out, that it's high time that we had a detailed discussion on what really are the privileges of MPs. If they do not have the right to even speak freely in parliament, then why have a parliament uh, in the first place at all? In fact, the uh, makers of the Indian constitution 
went so far as to even indemnify the media from Liber. For example, if I'm speaking uh, something which is incorrect, which is factually incorrect in Parliament, and you report it, you are indemnified by law that no the, the defamation proceedings will lie against you. And the reason why this was done was to ensure that complete and total candor, even if it verges on uh, something being factually incorrect, is permitted because that is how the truth and the whole mm. truth and all sides of the truth and all shades of the truth would come out. I think uh, those people who, uh, are, Mr. Tavari, who are objecting to this uh, possibly have not read the debates of the mm. Constituent Assembly uh, with regard to Article 105. They made absolutely fascinating reading. And I would like to urge the ministers, you know, who've been actually disrupting parliament, and this is a first in itself, that you have the Treasury benches disrupting parliament, mm. to go and read those Constituent Assembly debates as to what exactly did the founders have in mind when they put 100 in Article 105 into the Constitution. But Mr. Thiwari, we spend, the taxpayer spends a hell lot of money for parliament to function 2.5 lakh rupees per minute. Uh, what is the government's interest in stalling parliament in the way it has been stalled for the last four days? Well, essentially, I think they are taking uh, late Mr. Arun Jaitley's advice that disruption is a legitimate parliamentary tactic to another level altogether. You may recall uh, that in the November of 2010, when the BJP wiped out an entire session of parliament and followed that up with uh, repeated disruptions all the way till 2014, when a version of this question was asked to late Mr. Arun Jaitley, who was leader of the House, uh, leader of the opposition in the Rat Sabha, he very glibly said that disruption is a legitimate parliamentary tactic. And I think uh, uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. Treasury benches seems to have taken that to heart and they've forgotten that they are no longer on the opposition benches, but they're actually the government. Mm. But Mr. Tiwari, the argument that the BJP and the government are making is, why is the opposition demanding for a JPC when the matter is already in court? The Supreme Court is already looking at it. What's the point of having a JPC? Why do all this hangama over a JPC when the matter is being looked into? So therefore, you ask a very interesting question. And let me take you back to 1992 when the Harshad Mehta uh, scandal broke out. At that point in time, the courts were seized. Mm of the Harshad Mehta affair. But parliament in its wisdom constituted a joint parliamentary committee to look at the legal, regulatory and policy issues. And the Security and Exchange Board of India Act, the SEBI Act, was actually a result of, those, uh, of that JPC. Then in 2001, when the La Affair Ketan Parik took place, courts were seized of that particular uh, matter also. But Parliament, in its wisdom, constituted a joint parliamentary committee, which gave very constructive recommendations, which helped strengthen the regulation of capital markets. Then again, in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, Supreme Court was seized of the 2G matter. In fact, not only the Supreme Court, even the trial court was seized of the 2G matter, and some people uh, who were wrongly accused and later acquitted were in the custody of the CBI at that particular point in time. But Parliament, in its wisdom, decided to constitute a joint parliamentary committee, which looked into the entire allocation and pricing of telecom licenses from 1994 all the way till 2010. Mm. The reason why this happened is because the mm. Supreme Court's remit operates in a particular field. That is with regard to whether there's criminality, whether uh, any... Uh, aberrations have taken place uh, with regard to superintendents, but parliament operates in a different domain altogether. Parliament exercises superintendents over the regulatory uh, mechanisms which govern capital markets and your broader mm. uh, banking universe. Uh, uh, parliament also is the okay. final arbiter of policy. So under those circumstances, Merely to argue that uh, because the court is seized of a matter, Parliament should not be looking at it. 
I think people either are ignorant about past precedents or do not understand as to what is the role of courts and what is the role of parliament. Okay, Mr. Tiwari, good to chat with you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Mirror Now. Thank you very much indeed.